Darcy J. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. Yes, I stalked Ryan Darcy James. And yes, he knows that I tell this story. I actually have to give you a little addendum, because he's a very private guy, and I, I, you know, I emailed him, because he, I, I can't have his phone number, and, um, <laughs> why? I don't know why. Um, so I emailed him, and I was like, look, dude, you know, you're an Irish guy, you know, the more details, the funnier it is, come on. I was like, I am going to tell the story, but you can remain nameless. Or, you know, I could use your name. <laughs> and he was like, I have no idea what I'm agreeing to, but okay. So it's because of him that, that we get to do this. Anyway, so we did Fame, the musical, together. We did, yes. Uh, it's already funny, right? It's like, so yeah, we did Fame, the musical, and I was Serena, which is like the Doris character. I was crazy, shocking, I know. Um, and he played Nick, now who in the movie is actually gay. But like in the musical version, for some reason, it's just a big misunderstanding. Like, oh, thank God he's not really gay, because in the theater, that's not spoken about. <laughs> it always confused me. I always thought it was the other way around. But anyway, um, so he was Nick, and I was Serena, and I was in love with him. And I actually did like just fall hook, line, and sink of her. He's just dreamy. He's, I don't know if any of you have known him or worked with him, but oh, and he's so nice, and oh my God. So anyway, so I just fell madly in love, but he had a girlfriend, whatever. And um, so we did it at Pittsburgh, and then uh, we were supposed to go on to, I think, Tut's, Theater Under the Stars, and uh, he got Blood Brothers. So, you know, here I am, like, on, uh, like, the whatever, the month, like, in between, all I can think about is, like, I'm gonna kiss Brian Darcy James again. I know it's gonna be fake, but to me, it'll mean everything. And, um, because you know we do that. And, um, so here I am, like, in Theater Under the Stars, there's no Brian Darcy James. And I was, like, I had all this, like, you know, pent up, like, emotions and, and stuff that I had to express. So when you're, like, 22, 23 years old, you know, what do you do? You make a mixtape. <laughs> Don't you? Everyone, no, it's not just me. Um, so anyway, this was like literally like it was one of those where it was like CD to tape, CD to tape. CD it for like five days. Like I poured over this thing. Now here's the really crazy part. Um, <laughs> it's even crazier than just making a mixtape. So I wanted him to know who I was, but I didn't want him to know who I was. So on the mixtape, I put all these clues as to who I am, but then I go so crazy as to like, cause I was down in, in, in Houston, so he knew I was in Houston cause he was supposed to go to the show. So <laughs> I sent it inside an envelope to a friend who lived in New York <laughs> so that she could send it and it could have like a New York Post script so he wouldn't know it was for me, but the whole thing is clues as to who I am. So it's insane. But anyway, um, for your entertainment, I actually have the mixtape that I made for Brian Darcy James. So I won't torture you. Who am I? Who am I? She. I'm a girl. She is a lot. Just took a greatly fancy to the. Does the fear. She's too beyond for lack of thing. Now to the sort. Now to the sort. She knows farewell, she will not fret thee. Can the show me? Fair better to know her. Show me the key. Show her the key. Show her the key. Show me the key. Show her the key. For all so many years <laughs> I've been a minstrel girl. Singing for my supper in the throng. And in that time, my world has been a minstrel world. And the history of my life is in my song. Just one more, one more. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay, so it goes on. It goes on and on. And a lot of people who came before, they were like, is that real? I was like, oh. So anyway, so I'm doing all this, and I sent like a Shakespeare sonnet like about masters and vassals, I can't remember. But anyway, so that package went to New York, um, anonymously. 
except I have all these clues as to, because I want him to know who I am. So, um, so the show's over, I come back, you know, and I've been stalking at the stage door because I did a carousel, so like I hung out that stage door for a while and just watched him go home. But that's not like criminal or anything, right? Like, really. <laughs> so anyway, finally after, but like, you know, uh, you know, he's kind of finding out that I'm doing this and uh, literally like he, <laughs> <laughs> when I would see him, like on the street, like he would literally like try and hide behind things that he couldn't possibly hide behind, like a, like a you know a sign or something, but like, like it was this big, you know. So he'd see me coming, and he'd be talking to his friends. He'd be literally like, <laughs> just hoping to God, like I wouldn't stop and talk to him. <gasps> it was horrible. And like every time I saw him, now that I have friends who work with him, I tell him to go right up to his face, like a little too close, and be like, Donna Lynn says hello. That's <laughs> fun. So anyway, um, <laughs> I think it's funny. In my head, it's really funny. Um, of course, clearly, a lot of things in my head are not funny. Um, so, <laughs> so then the next bit is I kind of, you know, got over it, let it go for about a year. Like a year later, I get this phone call from Brian Darcy James on like my answering machine. And I was like, it's so cool and so cute. Like, I'm totally like dying. I'm in the party. And he was like, hey, I want to know if like, you want to get a cup of coffee or whatever. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm sure he's like married by now or, you know, clearly has a girlfriend. So I call him back and I'm like, totally cool. I'm like, hey, Brian, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I totally love to get a cup of coffee. That's fine. Whatever you want to pass. Like, totally cool. So we set up this, you know, time to have coffee or whatever. So even though like it's not a date, you know, I'm th I, you know, I go get my hair done, get my nails done. Like, I'm like, totally like, bam a new outfit, you know, Brian Darcy, bam, which is like totally different than like regular bam, so anyway, um, so like the night before, he calls me again, and I've got this message on my machine, and it's like, hey, Donalyn, it's Brian Darcy James, uh, listen, you know, I just broke up with my girlfriend, and I kind of, like, I want to go out, but like, I kind of feel like I'm on the rebound, so I don't want to, it was a date, <laughs> Brian Darcy James, literally, it was a date. I don't know how that explains the hiding behind the signs, but maybe he thought I was really cute. But anyway, um, <laughs> totally asking me out on a date. Well, my, my brain explodes, like I'm picking pieces of cranium like off of the ceiling, you know? <laughs> you know, but so the date's canceled, so that sucks. But anyway, so like I call back again, like I'm, you know, deep breathing and I'm like, hey, Brian, it's Donovan, no problem. That's totally cool. Like I totally understand with the rebound thing. That's all. So anyway, <laughs> the crazy though, like the year that I had been suppressing it, telling myself that I was okay with it, um, hit me like overnight. So have you ever seen Swingers? Okay, there's this great, oh, oh no, yeah, you have seen it, haven't you? Okay, there's this great scene in Swingers where this guy calls this girl and the answer machine keeps like cutting her, cutting her off. Oh, right? I've got this guy crawling right here. You've done it, haven't you? No? Yeah. It's a horrible feeling, horrible. So anyway, but this is before I had a cell phone. So literally like the crazy, like I'm literally walking down the street, like just on, on errands or whatever. And the crazy is just like building and building and building. So finally, I literally go to the nearest payphone. Yeah. And why I had so many quarters to this day, I will be just like, <laughs> if I just didn't have that many quarters. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So literally it's like, boom. Dip. Hey Brian, it's Donna Lynn. Like, I just want to say, you know, I'm still really cool about like, oh, it's not going out. Let's go to beep. Hey Brian, it's Donna Lynn. This one I got cut off. It's so weird. So anyway, I just want to say that. Like, beep. Brian, oh my God, I love you. I love you. I've been in love with you since I've been. I have a question. It sounds like it's I don't want you to go to beep. Fast forward again to literally a couple months ago. So I'm doing this uh, workshop of this uh, musical that I've done a couple times before, and I, you know, play opposite someone. And every time I've done it, it's been a different guy. So when I'm sitting in rehearsal, and uh, the guys, I said, "Who's my guy this time?" And they said, oh, "It's Brian." I'm like, "Yeah, Brian who?" And they're like, "Brian Darcy James." <laughs> I said, well, does he know I'm doing it? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. And I was like, and he's still doing it? <laughs> they were like, yeah. I said, actually, rehearsal next week is in his house. I can go to his house. I'm allowed to know where he lives. <laughs> and like, I 
to totally like mac on him hard on this, you know. So meanwhile, I'm like, woohoo! But otherwise, I'm like, he, the poor guy. So he can't possibly know that that's in the script. Otherwise, he would have run, you know, tear ass out of wherever place he was. So anyway, we go have this rehearsal at his house. I meet his wife, his daughter. <laughs> They're beautiful and nice and friendly, whatever. Um, they actually were. Damn it! And uh, so it's the day of the show, y'all. No, it's the day of the thing that we're doing. And uh, the director, Brian, is still doing Inish Moore stuff somewhere, and he was going to come later. And the director comes up to me and says, Now listen, I just want to let you know that you have free reign, you know, in this, you know, seduction scene to like just go crazy. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> See, you have to give that direction again when he's here. <laughs> because otherwise, if you don't give the direction while he's here, this is what's going to happen inside Brian Darcy James's head. <laughs> what is it about him? <laughs> That makes me want him. What is it about him that turns me pale? Something in his smile, something that I'll never understand. His wild abandon. What is it about him? I know it's wrong. That hurts my heart. I know he's rough. <laughs> what is it about him that hoists the sail? I don't know what to do, but we've been through enough. Something in his head instructing women. 